interesting sunlight look today. I always notice when it's really cold, it has this, I guess, kind of aura feel to it. A lot more people outside as a result too. Now what did I read today? I guess it was a huge day in the US for drones. I guess it's official and it was expected. Mandatory remote IDs and stuff. They posted official messages on the FAA accounts. It says here, these final rules carefully address safety, security, and privacy concerns while advancing opportunities for innovation and utilizing of drone technology. And it says from the Secretary of Transportation, Elaine L. Chow. And the other one says, FAA has issued final rules that will require remote ID of drones and enable operations of small drones over people and at night. These rules will accelerate the safe integration of drones into our nation's airspace. So that's actually a pretty big change. They have the big release here. It says, U.S. Department of Transportation issues too much anticipated drone rules to advance safety and innovation in the United States. The U.S. Department of Transportation's Federal Aviation Administration today announced the final rules for unmanned aircraft, commonly known as drones. These new rules will require remote identification of drones and allow operators of small drones to fly over people and at night under certain conditions. These rules come at a time when drones represent the fastest growing segment in the entire transportation sector. And according to this, it says they have 1.7 million drone registrations and 203,000 certified drone operators. And to them, they say remote ID will help mitigate risks associated with expanded drone operations such as flights over people and at night, and both rules support technological and operational innovation advancements. Now, one of the criticisms about this remote ID plan was how if you're going to broadcast exactly where the operator is, this is basically a thief's dream. They'll know exactly who's flying the high-end drone and where, and that could be trouble. So is that the case? It says here, Remote ID provides identification of drones in flight as well as the location of their control stations, providing crucial information to our national security agencies and law enforcement partners and other officials charged with ensuring public safety. Airspace awareness reduces the risk of drone interference with other aircraft and people and property on the ground. So with that, I'm a little unsure. Is it just, for example, law enforcement officers that will have information to this? Or could anyone just whip out their cell phone, for example, and say, oh, there's a the person there. And they talk about how things before with the night flying, you needed things like a waiver. But they said the new FAA regulations jointly provide increased flexibility to conduct certain small UAS without obtaining a waiver. The new rules make way for the further integration of drones into our airspace by addressing safety and security concerns. I think ultimately this is why they implemented rules like this. It says they get us closer to the day when we will more routinely see drone operations such as the delivery of packages. That's the assumption that all of this is mostly for commercial reasons. It says the remote ID rule applies to all operators of drones that require FAA registration. There are three ways to comply with the operational requirements. One, operate a standard remote ID drone that broadcasts identification and location information of the drone and control station. Operate a drone with a remote ID broadcast module, maybe a separate device attached to the drone, which broadcasts identification, location, and takeoff information. Or, operate a drone without remote ID, but at specific FAA recognized identification areas. So by the sounds of it, shouldn't this be sub-250 drones are exempt from this because it says drones that require registration and in terms of I guess the areas that sounds like clubs or specific fields are exempt from requiring these types of things. Now for night and flying over people it says the operations over people and night rule applies to part 107 operators. The ability to fly over people and moving vehicles varies depending on the level of risk a small drone operation presents to people on the ground. Operations are permitted based on four categories which can be found in the executive summary accompanying the rules. Additionally, this rule allows for operations at night under certain conditions. The final rule requires that small drone operators have their remote pilot certificate and identification in physical possession when operating, ready to present to authorities if needed. This was kind of interesting about the testing. It says the final rules replaces the requirement to complete a reoccurring test every 24 calendar months with the requirement to complete updated reoccurring training that includes operating at night and identify subject areas. It's kind of interesting. And this actually affects manufacturers too. It says both rules will become effective 60 days after publication in the Federal Register. The remote ID rule includes two compliance dates. 
drone manufacturers will have 18 months to begin producing drones with remote ID with operators having an additional year to start using drones with remote ID. So not here yet, but they're basically forcing everyone to basically adapt to this new process. So how do people in the U.S. feel about this? Just from seeing some of the articles, the highlights are U.S. to allow small drones to fly over people at night. So that's basically, I guess, one of the main things about this whole announcement. Whereas commercial companies or organizations like this one says, UAVSI welcomes remote ID and operations over people. Final rules for UAS. And as expected, if you look at people's comments, like a recreational flyer, they are not very happy overall. For example, reading some comments like this one, it says, this was done to benefit companies like Amazon while making it harder for small operators. And who are these additional authorities that can demand to see my license? Any idiotic that walks by, will everyone be able to locate the drone operator with this ID or just police, etc.? That's one of the big questions, actually. So how do people feel about this, the people in the US? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? At the same time, I would imagine even though this is the US, a lot of places will be a monkey see, monkey do type of situation too, maybe here in Canada. One topic it made me think about just being able to fly over people, I said it many times, some countries it's perfectly normal. I always find it a little funny, like people here, they freak out when a drone flies over a person. I even said, that drone you're using, more than likely where it was built in those places, it's actually perfectly normal, yet people fear mongering. So if you think about this, they say things like the remote ID and all that is for security. How does a remote ID suddenly make it all of a sudden magically safer to fly the drone over people and so forth when they fear mongered it so much? I mean, there's no change in the hardware, which you could argue adding remote ID makes it heavier, so more dangerous, isn't it? But ultimately, it benefits the commercial industry in a large way. Because as they said, this should open up things like being able to do drone delivery and stuff more regularly. So we'll see how it goes, I guess.
right. See you guys later.